Special Counsel Jack Smith paying appropriate tribute to the law enforcement officers who put their lives on the line defending the Capitol and members of the House and Senate on January 6th. One of those injured that day is D.C. Metropolitan Police Officer Daniel Hodges, seen here being crushed with his own police shield inside the Capitol, screaming in pain. And Officer Hodges is here with me now. Um, Officer Hodges, it's, it's very good to see you. And we discussed this and whether we could show it again, and you said it's, it's okay with you. Yeah. We know that there's been um, so much, the indictment detailing, you know, just how much Mr. Trump and his alleged co-conspirators were counting on violence, talking about it. They don't, they're not accused of inciting it. That would have made it a much more complicated case and harder to prove, perhaps. So there was a, a tactical decision there. But they counted on violence. They even at one point talked about, you know, okay, we've got the Insurrection Act to deal with, you know, what happens if people object to you keeping, staying in office. Right. Which means using the U.S. military on the streets of America. Yep. It's, which is uh, against, you know, everything except the insurrection, insurrection right. Act. It's crazy to suggest something so casually, right? To have the U.S. military just deployed in the streets when you um, grab power illegitimately like that. It's just, it's classic fascism. Did this indictment deal with the issues of the alleged conspiracy as you had hoped it would? Because I know you and your colleagues were in the front row watching every minute of the January 6th hearings as we carried them live. You oh, were very, I, uh, you were very engaged. Yeah, I, I trust... Um, I trust Jack Smith and his team. I'm grateful for them for getting us to this point and getting the indictment out there. I know it's been it's been a long time coming, but in so many ways, it's just the beginning. And I um, I just I, I think that they know what they're doing. So I trust them to get us to where we need to be. The indictment details um, also that at least five D.C. and Capitol police officers, five officers have died in connection with the rioting, with trying to save the Capitol that day. Um, many more have taken early retirement since or are still injured, still bearing the brunt of it. Um, the mental health issues, the trauma you've spoken about that in the past. Um, do these trials, talking to your colleagues and even perhaps with you yourselves, these appearances by the former president, this trial to come, the arraignment tomorrow, do these trigger anything? Do these create problems all over again, the PTSD? I mean, it never really goes away. I, there hasn't really been a day that's gone by where I haven't thought about it, partially because, you know, I pay attention to the news and how it's continuing to impact the current events and partially just how just burned in my memory it is. Um, so the trial may definitely is going to bring some of that up for people, um, but it's, it's necessary. It's part of the process that we need to have happen in order for accountability to um, take place. Um, does it upset you and your colleagues when you hear people, you know, talking about it as, you know, some of the Republicans, frankly, talking about what happened that day as, you know, tourists coming through, a normal day, <laughs> you know, not normal, but obviously trying to downplay the violence? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, they know that they're lying when they say that. They just say it because they're afraid. They're afraid of their own... Um, voting block. They need their support, so they just say what they want to hear. Um, the politicians say what the people want to hear, even if there's, it's verifiably false. And it's incredibly frustrating to hear that from our would-be leadership. Um, and I hope that as time goes on, those lies become more and more apparent for what they are, and people stop parroting them. And last summer, you testified against one of the rioters who assaulted you, Patrick McAfee, who was convicted and sentenced to seven and a half years. Um, he apologized for what he did to you. He said that he was being less a citizen and more like an animal that day. Do you forgive him? It's, it's hard to do. Um, you know, forgiveness takes time. It's not always there immediately when you when would be best for certain parties. I'm always open to the idea, you know, we, um, we have to try. I believe that people can change, and 
I hope that in his sentencing, um, he changes and becomes someone that will be a good civic citizen rather than someone who attacks the capital of the United States with uh, no evidence of fraud. I, um, I just have to hope that people change. And if there's evidence of that, then I, I will do my part to try and forgive them. Daniel Hodges, thank you for your service. Thanks for talking to us today. Of course, thank you. Wishing you continued success and healing. Thanks.